Uh, I think uh, that's it. Uh, if you can pardon me as well, I, I, I can. I mean, I have a bit of background noise. I hope you can hear me loud and, and well. Uh, as we are working from home, uh, I, I can I can hear that my neighbors are alarms off. So please uh, bear with us uh, and let's go th through uh, this. Um, so today, essentially, uh, my good friend Soli um, mentioned that we have to talk about how to invest on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Um, and I, I put together a few pages uh, just to help us with the conversation. On the next page, uh, Soli, you will see that I have um, uh, put out uh, a few, a few, a few things just to guide us. Uh, what are the disclaimers that I want us to talk about? The uh, what I do, and 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 really, if I hold stock or not. Uh, essentially, you should be worried if I'm trying to sell down a stock to, to you that I may benefit from. So it is absolutely uh, useful that uh, we, we 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 go. To, through this, I, I am the head uh, of market and IC securities. I oversee the trading uh, and uh, trading equities and fixed income uh, desk. Fixed income deals mainly in bonds and treasuries. Uh, what are my holdings? Do I hold any stock? Yes, I do. Well, whether uh, by design or by by traders case, yes, I do, do hold stock. I hold a bit of, of Standard Chartered Bank. I hold a bit of Guinness Gagana breweries uh, and some uh, MCN. And so just, just to put this out there uh, on the table, uh, so that I think we can, we can move, move on uh, and, and look at the subsequent uh, pages. Really, uh, why are we here? Uh, it's, it's a good question to honestly ask. Uh, why do you even want to do stocks or you want to trade in equities or you want to do investments um, in listed companies on the Ghana Stock Exchange? Why are you not uh, setting up a business? Why are you not, uh, you know, uh, buying a car to use for Uber or boats or other things? Why are you here? Two things from, from our perspective and from the years that we have spent uh, talking to investors. Uh, one is capital gains, uh, two is dividends. These are the two key things, um, unless there are, there are other core reasons that investors may have uh, that uh, uh, we, we, we are not saying, but really, Two key reasons: capital gains. Essentially, that is um, is is the gains that you make on the stock. Uh, it could be paper gains. It could be real gains. Real gains is when you have actually sold, you have bought, waited, uh, and sold uh, <coughs> in the market. So that's that's really your capital gains. What else are you looking out for? Uh, Dividends. Dividends are declared by uh, companies at the end of the year when audits are being done. They go through uh, shareholder meetings. Um, management will propose an amount, uh, which is a share of the profits at the end of the year, uh, that they will pay to shareholders. And therefore, shareholders at the meeting will vote on this and say that, okay, uh, we want to be paid X amount of the dividend that the company has declared to pay us. So it's essentially, it's your share of uh, profits. And as we go along, uh, we will definitely see how these two key things are, are, are drives, you know, how we should invest and what we should essentially do. Uh, I just put a quick snapshot uh, beneath just to show you um, in terms of capital gains on returns, uh, where where the top uh, five names are in, in the market. Uh, if you take 
MTN, you can see that it's currently uh, trading at 85 pesos. And the beginning of the year to date, uh, you, you know, essentially what it's saying, if you had bought at the start of the year, on January 2nd, uh, and, you are, and you have sold today, uh, you are making capital gains in percentage terms of 32%. Uh, and the rest follows. GCB same, 11%, uh, total Ghana, Goyal, and Startup Chartered Bank. Um, dividend will be in a form of yield, what you earn on that, uh, on that, on that investment that uh, you have made in the company, for which reason uh, they are paying you a share of that profit. So investors always <laughs> uh, dividends in terms of, of, of how much really is yielding this investment yielding uh, 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 for me, which, which in essence, quote unquote, you would look at it as a sort of interest uh, rate in a way. Uh, so moving forward, uh, having said this and moving forward, uh, really after we have looked at why we are here, uh, and, and it is clear in our minds uh, why we are here, now we need to look at what is really uh, available, uh, what are options. Uh, so once, once you are on the stock exchange, what well, options are available to you? And I've, I've simply broken them down into sectors, um, into ordinary stock. So you will really see your, your I mean, ordinary listed uh, companies on the, the exchange, uh, which I'm showing in sectors, as you can see. Uh, they are telecoms, they are banking uh, sector stocks. Uh, they are insurance sector stocks. They are fast moving consumer goods. Uh, stocks, they are oil and gas stocks, and they are mining stocks. There are a few others. I'm, I'm only just showing you a handful. At least these are, are the ones that most investors uh, tend to look at and, and focus on. Um, and so these are ordinary stocks. Uh, secondly, you would see that there are alternatives uh, to these stocks, even though they trade on the exchange as stocks. Uh, the, the way they are valued and the way they are priced and the way they trade uh, may, may, may be different from your regular MTN or CalBank or ETI or Ecobank. So this is the ETFs, Exchange Traded Fund. Uh, so it's a fund uh, which, which, sits, which has been listed on the stock exchange. Um, we only have one of, 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 of those uh, currently on the market. The good thing about that is that it's backed by gold. Uh, so it's called the new gold ETF. Uh, and so uh, those are other options that you may look at. Uh, gold is a store of value. And investors look at gold when the, the, the market is in a downturn. And over a long time, they use gold to actually hedge, uh, you know, several spikes in the market, you know, such as you know, difficult times like like this, uh, when we have the COVID-19 and, and, and so on. Uh, Sule, you may want to keep sharing uh, your, your screen. We have other, other names like uh, the depository shares, uh, which, which uh, also trade exactly like shares, uh, but a typical example of that is the Anglo Gold Ashanti. Uh, which are, have, are, are rather listing uh, small units uh, of shares that will that can convert into a unit of Anglo Gold Ashanti uh, shares. Then you will find uh, cross listed stocks. When I say cross listed companies or stocks, uh, they are stock, they are companies that are on the Ghana Stock Exchange at the same time are on other stock exchanges, uh, either in the Africa, uh, in, the, in the Americas, or in, in Europe. The typical of those would be uh, Talo Oil. If you remember sometime in 2011, Ghana, 2010, 2011, Ghana discovered oil. Um, and, and a listing was done. It was a secondary listing for Talo. Talo is, 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 has its, its main listing uh, on the London Stock Exchange, and that's where it trades most. 
So most times, you know, investors who are quite savvy uh, will look at the price between Ghana uh, and on the, on, on the London Stock Exchange and see which is, is higher. And if there exists some arbitrage, arbitrage is if there, if there exists some differences uh, in price in absolute dollar terms, uh, they may want to then now either buy here, transfer the shares to London, and then sell and make some gains on it. So these are also options that they don't happen often, uh, but they are there in the market. Um, Ecobank Transnational Incorporated as well uh, did the same. They are, it's listed in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, uh, and in Nigeria as well. Uh, there's been quite a lot of movement on these three stock exchanges uh, when it comes to price, when it comes to investors uh, trying to take advantage of um, arbitrage, which is price uh, differential. The last one is Golden Star Resources, which is a mining company. Um, in Ghana here, it's on the exchange. It's also on the Toronto Stock Exchange and it's on the New York Stock Exchange. And so, uh, again, same principle. Um, shares are fungible. You can transfer one unit from here to US or to run, uh, Canada to trade it and make some capital gain. And vice versa is the same. Uh, so moving forward, essentially, th these are the areas. This is what is available on the stock exchange itself when it comes to trading stocks. Now, what do you do next? Knowing all of this, you, you have what's available to you. You have the options. You can see for yourself. Uh, how do you access the market? You can't go to the market directly, well, to the stock exchange and say that, uh, look, I need to buy XYZ, I need to buy MTN, I need to buy a Cobank. You need to go through a licensed dealing member, which is a broker. I am one. I am a licensed member uh, by the stock exchange. Uh, but really, how do you choose a broker? If you choose a good broker, the rest of the investing process will be entirely easy uh, for you. And so it is important that in your, in your broker selection, uh, you do a good job. You can do recommendations. You can look through the um, exchange. You can go to the exchange for recommendations. Uh, but more importantly, a good way to look uh, for information uh, is to randomly ask the broker community uh, what the market share of all the broker kickers are. Market share is essentially is who is doing the most trades in the market. I mean, which broker is doing the most trades? Um, uh, because there, there, there's a total of about 21 licensed brokers in the market. Really, not everybody is doing some real business. Uh, but you need to find out who is doing the most. And once you do, chances are that the likelihood of your orders or being executed much faster, I mean, it's higher because there's always a buyer and there's always a seller that the broker uh, will be seeing. Uh, research capabilities is key. Now, once you know what's available, you need to then now drill down as to how to make the investment this session itself quite well. The brokers have research analysts in-house that are always going through the news. They are following the companies. They're having meetings with CFOs, CEOs. Uh, they are on investor calls and so on and so, so, so forth. And so they keep track of, of the companies that investors care about and, and, and obviously uh, make, make brokers the most money by way of uh, trading. And so you need to do that. Uh, you need to check who is churning out good reports that right from the web go, you can be receiving them, you can sign up and, and read these reports and, and, and better inform you yourself. Response time is key. Um, brokers need to create a channel for you to ask questions, to make a request. A request. And the time around time should be awesome. And so uh, that's one thing you need to uh, really look out for. It will be absolutely frustrating uh, if you are looking for information and your broker cannot uh, help you in good time. By the time you have all the information, the market may have moved and you would have lost uh, money. The other key important block, block point is that access points and channels. Uh, there's COVID. There is COVID, um, 
and, and most people are working from home. Other firms have fully gone uh, remote. Uh, and so you need to look out for brokers who are putting technology before you right in your hands, such that you can do emails, you can trade electronically, uh, you can make payments electronically, you can get paid electronically in a faster way. So these are key. The other part is after trade so support. What happens after you have done your trade, you have bought your stock, what happens next? Will the broker leave you alone? Will you treat it as if it's a parcel of land that you have bought, uh, that you can go to, to bed and come back in 10 years and see whether it's still there and expect that it would have appreciated in value. Uh, that's that's what, what you will want. So you need regular interaction. The broker needs to put you on uh, the publication list. You need to be getting regular updates. The important point here, really, and of course, you need to be mindful of fees. Fees, fees, fees. Is your broker charging you competitive fees such that once you enter the market, you are buying or you are selling, uh, you are actually maximizing your return by paying less fees. But be mindful as, as you go to the table for asking for a reduction in fees, you need to be mindful that you also need to do more business. Uh, to justify uh, the fee, the fee uh, 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 reduction in there. Uh, shall we move on uh, to the next page? Um, really, so after we've done all of this, uh, you've, you've chosen your broker, you are happy with your broker, you have been set up and everything. Uh, what next, really? What's your strategy? Should you do short term? Should you do medium term? Should you do long term? I mean, really, I would always say uh, it, it depends on the individual. The big question here is, the big answer here, or the big comment here is that whatever your, your deal strategy is, whatever your holding period is, whether it's short, medium, or long, there's a play for you in the market. There's a way that you can situate yourself in the market and maximize your returns. And so it may be different from me, it may be different from you. And so those, these are things that you need to know, you need to sit down, reflect, uh, what, is, what is the pressure on the money that you want to invest? Uh, really, what are you investing for? Is it for a project, for a house, uh, for postgraduate education, for which you will be raising, you will probably need the money in a year's time, two, three, four, five years. Uh, is it for an emergency fund for your family, you know, uh, and so or it's, it's you are investing really for the long term to start a business. So these things will dictate which which sectors you should go in, which stocks you should buy. I always say that um, a series of short term uh, I mean, strategy leads to a medium to a long term uh, goal. But of course, not all strategies are the same. And so uh, be mindful of this. This is something that is key. Uh, don't mismatch your, your cash with your, with your lab abilities. Um, and so really, if you need to do short term, make sure that the money you have um, really fits that profile. Uh, don't take short term money and invest in a long term stock. I mean, that, that will be dangerous. You are not matching. Uh, your 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 points well, and therefore, when market starts to tumble in the short term, uh, you will find you, yourself uh, wanting. And vice versa is the same. Uh, so if we move on, once we have this, we will tidy this up. It is clear in our minds what we need to do here. Our strategy. We've spoken to our broker. What we need to do next, really slowly, is the next page where. Uh, we are really seeing, um, putting things into action. Uh, really, at this point, you need to act. You, you don't have to over, over, over analyze. Uh, they say over analysis, uh, you know, you, you may eventually get paralyzed uh, by, by over analysis. So really act quickly. Um, um, uh, understand why you need to invest. Uh, uh, match your, 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 your investment horizon properly, assess your risk, which is a key point, and, and then it is time to act. When it's time to act, what do you do? 
uh, you need to two things. You need a brokerage account. As you are with your broker, your broker needs to open an account for you. One is a cash account, and two is a securities depository account. The cash account will track your transactions. It means you have funded cash, you have put cash in your account, you have used the cash to buy stocks, and therefore it is showing you that I have bought MTN, I have bought uh, Echo Bank, I'm left with 5,000 cash in the accounts, and here is your statement. Then you need the securities depository account, which is the CSD account, um, to, 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 to also keep hold of the stocks that you have bought. In the past, it was in paper form. Now it is electronic. And so like you have your cash in your bank statements, you can open your app and see that I have 1 million, I have 2 million, and it's sitting there. Same way, once you ask your broker uh, for a statement, if they don't have uh, digital channels, you can, if they do, you can log in and see that you have, these are the stocks that you have, and this is the value uh, of the stocks depending uh, on the current market price. So that's what you need to do. Once you have done that, then you need to start buying. I know most people would want to buy cheap. And buying cheap necessarily does not mean that the, the, the share price is two pesos or is, is, is five pesos, and therefore it is cheap compared to the amount of cash that you hold. Buy cheap really means you are buying, you need, you need to understand the value. And this is where the, the, your brokers research team, team and the advisors will help you to understand value. So it is not in terms of absolute terms, it is in terms of value. Where is the market pricing this company? And where is the actual value, which is the intrinsic value of this company? Uh, and, and, and that is what will determine uh, what price you should pay. So don't look at the absolute numbers and say that uh, Echo Bank is expensive. At a point in time, Stanchard was trading at 30 cities and 40 cities. Everybody said, oh, it was expensive. Just by looking at the absolute in absolute terms. Uh, but investors, institutional investors who were savvy enough and understood it and were buying because they were buying value. Uh, the next thing most people would want to do really, and it's by no fault of, of theirs, is to get the most out of the dividend payment. So they are looking for stocks that will give them high yields, i.e. high interest uh, uh, income. And so they want stocks that pay a high dividend yield. So they want to buy cheap and sell high. At the same time, they want stocks that are giving them high dividend yields. Most people know this in the market. Most people trade based on this, uh, but it's not everybody who, who wins. Uh, once you do your stock screening with the help of your broker, you need to ask yourself a few things. I mean, as a broker and as a trader, we, we see things that uh, um, really helps helps in, in the advice that we, we give. One thing most investors don't do, especially retail and individual investors don't do, is to look at the shareholder list profile the list of shareholders in the company that you want to buy. Uh, who owns the stock? Who's the majority shareholder? Who are the other shareholders? Look them up, Google them. Uh, if you have to talk to your broker, do same. Are they all local? Are they all foreign? Because these questions are important because locals trade in a certain way, foreigners trade in a certain way, and the, the dynamics are different. If you are buying into a company that is 80% locally owned, um, you can trust me that movement on that stock would always be in one direction. If it's going up, it, it will keep going up. If it's coming down, it will keep coming down. Um, uh, but, and, and, and there may not be that much trading activity in that stock. The stocks that have a lot of foreign participation is quite reactionary. Foreigners react to information, they trade based on that information, and the stock, and there's a lot of price discovery uh, in the market for that stock. It makes it easy for you to enter the stock, to buy and to sell at any point in time. 
there's no point in entering a stock that you cannot exit. So it is important to look at that. Uh, the next thing is to look at the demand and supply dynamics. Uh, Ecobank for instance, it's a good stock. People like it. There are foreigners who like it. There are locals who like it. It has big local share holders, but it is not very active. It doesn't move much. It moves steadily. And so if you are the type of investor that you need to see movement and action, that may not be the stock for you. So you need to look out for the demand and supply dynamics, uh, which like, of course, again, is will be also led by sentiment. Look out for sentiment. Sentiments move markets. Uh, the last, but not the least, the thing you also want to look at is what is the market consensus? What is the analyst consensus? What is the analyst at this brokerage firm saying? What is the analyst at this other brokerage firm saying about the same stock? And you can check about four or five analysts. If they are all doing the same quality of work and they are, they are, they are using the same principles to value the company and track and follow the company, you realize that the, the, their valuations and, and their thoughts would, would head into a certain direction. And therefore, their recommendations will be in a certain direction. So you need to look at that, um, and you know, whilst you make your decision to buy the stock, uh, your broker can help you uh, with this. Ultimately, again, go back to to your why. What is your motivation for the investment? Why are you buying this? Why are you putting this money away? And what is it for? Um, in summary, this is what I think would help you uh, to, to have a good grip of, of, of your stay on the stock exchange. Uh, my next and final point really is that after you have done all this, really, you need to fund your account. You need to start and start acting. You need to fund your account, get your account uh, details from your broker. The broker will give you their bank account details, fund your account, and start buying. Once you buy, monitor and continuously be digital. Follow the news, choose brokers who will give you access to their portals. Uh, you have Dobia, you can continue to check market information and news where I work. We have a digital platform that you can manage all your investments in one place. It's called I See My Well. And if you need to onboard, if you don't need to come to our office, we can do the same for you as well at icgroupltd.com. Uh, good luck and stay on the, on the best side of the train. Uh, Sule, I think I'm done here. Uh, probably open it up for questions and, 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 and have a conversation. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much for the presentation, Randy. Uh, that was great. Um, I think it is time for uh, questions and comments. And uh, you can send it in via the chat box, or you can raise your hand, and then you can speak as well. Um, Please send in your questions, or you can raise your hands to speak as well. Uh, let us know which option is best for you. Yes, yeah, so Sule, I think I see uh, I see a hand up for Elias and Daniel. So uh, maybe Elias, you can go first, and then Daniel. Yeah, hello. Hope I'm loud and clear. Yes. Yes. Yes, Randy, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very lovely presentation. Uh, it's, it's increased my appetite to want to invest on the market. Uh, I, 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 want to, I want to know at what point the broker charges their, uh, their fees. Uh, at what point is it, uh, how is it like, how is it done? Is it after the the buy, I mean, uh, you have to pay upfront. I'm mean, just, just an idea of how the 
you know, fees, yeah, you know, charged. Sure, sure. Maybe we'll, we'll take the other question in addition uh, to this and then I'll answer all at once. Uh, there's Daniel Mensa as well. Um, hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for your insightful presentation. Um, so my question is uh, with regards to um, getting access to analyst reports in Ghana. Well, I haven't, um, you know, been investing in the, I started investing in the Ghana Stock Exchange not long ago, uh, but even whilst I was a student, um, I was studying like the market, like from time to time. And one thing I realized was uh, um, unavailability of um, analyst reports. So I usually don't see um, analyst reports on um, stocks on the Ghana Stock Exchange. And I want to find out, um, because you mentioned that we should be checking analyst reports to, um, you know, to make decisions um, with regards to the stocks to buy. So I want to find out why um, are there not like analyst reports available? Or is it that there are reports available, but then, um, they are not made available to the general public and whether we have to maybe um, pay for it before we can have access to it. Yeah, thank you. Sure, sure, many things. Maybe I'll start, I'll start with yours as, as it was the last uh, uh, question. Analyst reports are available, but it costs money to produce uh, from these brokerage firms. Uh, typically in, in Ghana, uh, most people, most investors don't like to pay for the cost of the research. And so um, increasingly brokers are forced to, to, to use, well, not necessarily use that, but tailor that towards clients who pay, who can't pay uh, for, for the, the, the service. And so you would be seeing broker reports really at the last stage when you have signed on to, to a broker. Um, for, for an individual investor, if you, of course, if, if you have uh, relationships with a broker, you may ask to see a few sample reports just to test the quality. Uh, then it, it will help you to, 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 to onboard you and then you'll see the full range of reports. Because it costs money, uh, brokers are quite skeptical about who they share the reports with. But I guess the more people see reports, then the more interested they become and may want to invest or trade through that broker. So increasingly, uh, you will be seeing that. Uh, but once you make a request at your brokerage firm, uh, even when you haven't opened an account, you may uh, get those uh, reports as well. I hope I have answered uh, that. So ask your broker, uh, they, once you're on their mailing list, you will see a, a host of reports uh, that is ch 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 China. Okay. If you okay. uh, thank you, Randy. We, we have a couple of questions for you as well uh, from the chat box. Uh, from Philemon, how can someone who doesn't live in Ghana access a stockbroker? Okay, awesome. I will be biased here <laughs> uh, because I'm a stockbroker. Uh, ideally, if you are not speaking to, to me, you would go to the Stock Exchange web website, you see a list of all the brokers. It is by no means in, 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 um, in, in a form of ranking, it is just arranged alphabetically. And so you can randomly pick and, 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 and contact them and then you start an investment process. Where I work, I see securities as a market leader with over 50% market share. And therefore, we have digital ch channels that um, I can share with, with you in the chat that you can go there and start looking to onboard and then to tr 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 trade. Or speak to Adobe. Uh, uh, how long does it take for an order to execute with IC Securities Group? 
How long? It depends. Uh, it's fairly quickly. It depends on liquidity. It depends on whether there is a buyer, uh, there's a seller in the market for what you are looking for, and there's a seller at the price that you are looking for. Most of the of the individual investors really uh, want to buy at the market price, so subject to availability within 24 hours or 48 hours in a stock that is very liquid, we can execute for you almost instantly. Thank you, Randy. More questions uh, related to the previous one. Is it possible to invest if I am not in Ghana? Yes, you can invest. Uh, everybody can invest, uh, irrespective of uh, where you are, irrespective of location, irrespective of nationality. Uh, you can invest. The only thing is that uh, you may not be able to receive dividends directly uh, because you cannot use a foreign bank account to be receiving dividends. And so you may you may talk to your broker. Your broker may use their client's trust account, which is an omni bus account that will collect all clients' dividends and then further pay you. Uh, but in terms of investing, accessing the market itself, yes, you, you can. And Sule, I think I skipped Elias's first question. Let me ad attempt to ad ad address that, and then we can take more uh, questions. He's asking what's the cost. At what point do you pay? Uh, the recommended range by the stock exchange is zero. Is sorry, it's one point five percent all in cost of the value of the shares that you are going to buy or sell. Um, and up to 1.8, sorry, up to 2.5 percent of the value of the stocks that you need to buy. The regulatory fees add up to 0.7 percent, and then the broker fees range from um, 0.8 percent to 1.8 percent. So your maximum fee that you could pay if your broker is charging you the maximum fee plus the regulatory fees is 1.8, sorry, it's 2.5%. Uh, uh, uh. Thank you, Randy. Uh, there is a good question here from our friend Ebenezer. Um, how, why does Ghana not have applications that can support retail investing like Robinhood in the US? So more of applications where you can log in, maybe buy your stocks and so forth, you know, without the hassle of having to run to a broker to go through some long processes. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's more of an entrepreneurial question uh, than, than, than why it does not exist. Uh, some brokers offer it, I mean, offer it. Um, the, the stock exchange itself is now beginning to also, uh, you know, license or, or give approvals for internet trading. Most brokers have the platform, they have the APIs uh, to connect to the market, which, which we call direct market ticket access. Uh, you can trade through your phone, you can trade through uh, web uh, or, an, or an app. So the, the infrastructure exists. Uh, it's just that the exchange uh, will need to approve the brokers who have now submitted applications uh, to them such that it, they can open it up to everyone to actually invest. But then infrastructure exists. Today, if you send me an order via uh, my IC securities portal, I will see it. It will not go directly to the market because, you know, of course, because of what I've just described. Uh, but I will see it as a broker and, and process your orders for you. So it exists. Maybe we need more of, of such to actually happen. Randy, uh, we have a hand raised by Samuel Ama. Uh, Samuel, you can, the floor is now yours. Yeah, hello. Yes. Uh, Randy, I just want to find out are you allowed to have uh, an account? with more than one licensed broker when you want to deal, uh, want, want to invest a uh, stock exchange? Good, good question. Yes, you can, uh, but you need to be mindful uh, of the administrative work that is involved. 
if you want to do that, yes, you, you, you can. Uh, the way the system and infrastructure works is that it uses your ID as your ultimate identification number. And so if you open an account with broker A, you open an account with me, the ID you provided, if you assume you, you use a passport, uh, your passport number, that will be used to create the account for you. If you go to broker B, you may want to use the same passport ID such that at any point in time that you need to consolidate your account, you need to move securities from one account to the other, you will be able to, to do that freely. If you don't, then the system and the infrastructure will see you as two separate entities. And even though you can still transfer your shares, there may be uh, charges uh, applied to that. But overall, yes, you can. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, we have a question here from Diane Davis. What do you do if your brokerage service is no longer open? Uh, maybe specifically SDC brokerage. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I think there is um, there's a procedure that uh, the exchange you know allows such brokerage houses who either have lost their license or have voluntarily uh, decided to discontinue. Uh, the brokerage service. All, all, all their customers are contacted, the announcements are made, and they are handed over uh, to another brokerage firm who is willing uh, to take up those investments. And so uh, you may want to contact them back and ask uh, which broker uh, you know, is, 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 is handling those accounts or really uh, go directly to the registrar of the companies that you hold the shares in and check on your shares and say that uh, you want to see the status of your sh sh shares and be sure that it is in your name, it's tied to you. You can get a paper certificate from there and then go to any other broker, open an account and deposit convert those uh, shares into those accounts. I hope it has answered your question. Okay, uh, Randy, we have uh, a question here um, by the same person, Bitcoin versus stocks, which, one, which is more profitable? <laughs> which is more profitable? <laughs> Well, based on the charts that we have seen and I have seen, and based on some experience, um, if you are using the right ch channels to invest, to trade in big coins, uh, of course, this is assuming that you are buying at the right price and you are exiting at the right price, which will be the same for stocks, for any other thing. Uh, and so assuming you bought when Bitcoin started, and you sold at the peak, I think at a point it was $50,000. And at some point it was $200 or $100. So you can do the math. Uh, the exchange has over the past 10 years or so, um, in particular years, you would see returns close to 80% in specific years. In specific stocks, in specific years, you would see returns around 200%. Uh, these are rare, but it does happen. But over a long period of time, I mean, really, uh, you'll be looking at a range of 30 to 40% in terms of returns. So I will leave you to make that judgment. I mean, on that. Thank you, Randy. So we'll take our final two questions, and then we'll bring the webinar to an end. Uh, Samuel has raised his hand again. So no, uh, Samuel, I, 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 that, that, that's, it, that's it for now. I've, I, my, my, my question has been answered. All right, Samuel, uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, Randy, 
there's a, a follow-up question from Diane who asks about what happened if your broker no longer exists or ran out of business. She's asking if another broker can handle this on her behalf. Yes, yes, another broker can. The good thing about the structure, the, 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 the market structure, is that, um, and it's, 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 it has improved you know, significantly, that the, the shares that you hold is held uh, through the broker, but ultimately uh, at the central securities depository. And the same central securities depository is, is the account that you're actually opening. The broker is only facilitating that. And so if you have shares that are in the central securities depository and your broker has uh, discontinued service or collapsed, you can move to another broker or you can go to the central securities depository itself. You can write to them to give you a, a statement of account uh, to see what you hold there. And then once you speak to your, you show that to your broker, they will guide you as to how to move those securities to your account with that broker. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Randy. Uh, I think that, uh, okay, so we have a final question here and then we'll use that to and the webinar is, yeah, uh, from Patricia Adusi. Um, it appears it is not that easy to invest in the stock market. That is broker fees, analyst fees, and I am sure there are more charges. How is the market making it attractive and easier for the ordinary Ghanaian to access information? Uh, good, good, good question. I don't know whether to make a disclaimer, uh, sorry, a disclosure here or not, but I will, uh, the, the question seems to, to come from a, 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 a familiar person, but it is a, it's ultimately a good, a good uh, question. Uh, the, the biggest challenge really in our market and, and the exchange absolutely acknowledges that is accessibility. And both the exchange and brokers are working to get together to take the market to the ordinary person. The, the, what we have seen with the MTN IPO is that over 100,000 Ghanaians were able to buy the IPO, subscribe to the IPO via mobile money. So they didn't even move, move anywhere. They didn't fill any uh, forms. They didn't go to any broker. Uh, but obviously, these platforms are tied to a broker. They were able to buy the MTN IPPO shares through their Momo accounts. And there's work being done to make this uh, wide, widespread. There are brokers who have platforms that are being given to, to the masses uh, to actually subscribe to and use. Once the exchange is, has started giving up approvals to these brokers in terms of trading platforms that can go out for anybody to then use, then you know we can bridge the this gap. You talked about fees as well. There are no ending fees anyway. Uh, research fees are really not uh, charged. I don't think anybody pays for research uh, uh, fees in this market, even the foreigners. Uh, who, 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 intend, who tend to pay these fees are very uh, few. So nobody pays for research. I think what the broker is saying is that you need to be doing more trades such that the broker fees that they charge you can cover the professional cost and can cover their research cost as well. So there are no hidden fees anywhere. You pay a maximum of 2.5% depending on, on which broker you are trading with. I hope I've answered your question, Patricia. Uh, thank you very much, Randy. I wanted us to go, uh, but there seem to be a very good question here by uh, Daniel Mensa. Uh, with regards to the MTN IPO, I don't seem to have any certificate for the pages. So if I want to sell the shares, how can I go about it? 
Okay, so good, good, good question. And I think just, just to answer that directly, um, um, you can I probably I'll leave I will leave a, a group email address in the chat box that you can pick and send an, an email to. Um, during the IPO, there, there, there are no IPOs these days that are done and issued uh, paper set certificate. That, that is gone. That has been abolished. Uh, all, all securities are issued electronically. So I talked about the central securities depository shares. So your shares are somewhere sitting with a broker um, in the central securities depository. Uh, most likely it will be with us. And so I will leave uh, a group email address here such that you can send an email uh, or reference me and then, and then we will become assist with that. Uh, thank you very much for the webinar, Randy. Uh, we have emails from some participants that I will also share with you, uh, especially Dan Davis. Maybe she may want to pick up on her issues with you with the SDC account. So I will share her email with you as well. Uh, thank you for, for enlightening all of us and for the participants. Thank you for turning up for the webinar. I hope you've learned something and that uh, we all leave this webinar better than we came. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye. Sure, many thanks, Sule, and many thanks all. Enjoy your evening. Thank you.